What's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics, smash them together to make inspirational projects for you folks. We want to welcome everybody in the live chat room. We're hanging out, Pedro. Help me while I fix this. We are hanging out in all of the chat rooms, YouTube, Discord, Twitch, LinkedIn, Periscope. Shouting out to everybody hanging out this lovely morning, afternoon, evening, it's and night. Yeah. To everybody joining all around the world, some quick shout outs to Liz, Blitz City DIY, Hello. Mr. Certainly Bruce Hello. hanging out, S-K-E-R. Showing off some cool prints in the Discord. Definitely log yeah. in that to see all those awesome pics. We got Jim Henderson, Hendrickson hanging out. Uh, Vince Fark, uh, Fetty Two, Alvaro, yep. and Do Wester hanging out in the Discord. Everybody stop by, say hello. Yeah. Post also, up your awesome makes in there so yeah, we can check them out. Zena. Hello, Zena. Welcome to the show. Again, morning, if anybody Zena. would like to join us, we are hanging out in the live broadcast chat room in Discord. And the invite code for that is discord.gg slash Adafruit. And uh, yeah, we'll get started with uh, some housekeeping stuff. Good morning, Minnesota. Menta on the YouTube chat. Sweet. All right. Let's jump into uh, the freebie deals that are going on. Yeah, shout out to, to, to Lamar and Phil. We're able to keep doing these, and uh, these are while supplies last. So for orders that are $99 or more, you'll get a free Parma Proto half-size breadboard. For orders that are $149 or more, you get the breadboard plus a STEMI QT breakout. And if you have an account, we'll make sure you don't get the same one twice. And, and then for orders that are $200 or more, you get the STEMI QT board, the Parma Proto board, and free UPS ground shipping. That's for US continental owning. And then for orders that are $2.99 or more, you get the free U.S. Continental Shipping, the STEM QT board, the half-size Perma Proto, and the Circuit Playground Express. All those supplies last. You can go to adafruit.com slash free to, uh, to get more deets. Cool. All right. I'll do the newsletters next for daily doses of newsletters. If you'd like some stuff in your inbox, if you've got an inbox that's empty, maybe you want to fill it up with stuff, we got Adafruit Daily. Dot com, you can subscribe to the many categories that might pique your interest, such as Python on hardware, biohacking news, 3D printing, um, and there's more. Check those out. It's adafruitdaily.com. We won't subscribe you automatically to any of these because we have morals. <laughs> so check it out. It's, it's focused on the products. New products get added weekly, so uh, this is a good way to get notified uh, when they're added. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Jobs.adafruit.com. If you are looking for a new gig or if you're an employer looking for some new maker folks, check out jobs.adafruit.com. There are some new ones up there right now. So everywhere, any, anywhere from Lucknow, India, all the way down to uh, Princetown, New Jersey. Looking for a product design engineer, full stack developer, or even a makerspace specialist. So if that sounds interesting to you, it's free to do so. You can set up your profile and um, get going there so cool thank you Lamar and Phil for uh, making the jobs board all right um, ba -ba 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 -ba. circuit that out every Monday at 2 p.m. it gets posted as an archive and, and all the various podcasting service players places there's also a playlist cool all right I have one last piece it's it's sort of housekeeping stuff, but there's a contest going on, and it's, it has to do with these lovely boards. So this is the captioning this photo. Uh, PT has followed Mr. Lady Ada, put together this blog post. It's also been posted on the various channels, on the Adafruit's channels. It's the caption contest, right? So just tweet at them uh, a, a funny, a funny uh, whatever. Caption. <laughs> caption, yes, thank you. And uh, you'll get... Um, You'll get entered to this uh, to this this capture contest. Sorry, I'm out of words. It's, they're going to announce it tonight on Ask an Engineer for sure. That's tonight, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Did I do good there? <laughs> Does anybody have any captions? Any fun captions? I saw some really funny ones. Yeah. 
four boards, four sizes, all Circuit Python. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I got. So check that out if you want to, you know, win a, all the master putters. I'm looking at y'all. Get mm -hmm. some get some fun puns in there, and uh, maybe you'll win a board. Yeah, Lamar and Phil always make sure they have like a like a like a private stash of uh, of stuff. Is our audio like not working? No, we're good. There are people just getting some buffering on the Twitch. We have a backup this week. Yeah, if we the have audio a dies, we have our tried and true mm -hmm. other microphone right here. We'll switch to. It's right there. That's right. So if you hear any audio changes, that's what's going on. Yeah. Given the big Hopefully old metal finger to Wirecast today. <laughs> No, it's not even Wirecast's <laughs> issue. We think what our issue was is our power supply and our USB microphone just wasn't adequate. So we got a bigger one with three amps. So we should be good. I heard that Wirecast is a punk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's continue on with the show. This week's project, I think that's all the housekeeping, right? I think so. I talked about the, the caption contest, so y'all can tweet at Ada Fruits. There's a hashtag, right? There's a hashtag, it's like, it's in the blog post. I don't want to screw this up. This is the hashtag here. <laughs> it's very small. Yeah, Adafruit RP twenty forty CC. That's the caption contest. Caption caption. There you go. Peter said it, not me. Um, so yeah, this week we're gonna chat about some updates that we did to the, sort of last week's project, as we kind of get uh, get some stuff ready for the next projects. Um, so you might remember the Lemon keypad project. This is a little USB HID uh, keypad. It's got six switches, 3D printed. It's got a cutie pie in, in, inside. And, and uh, you can export a DXF and then use some software like Ink, Inkscape or Illustrator to kind of draw out icons. So what I've done is um, I have an SVG that you can use as a template. If you have a vinyl cutter like a Cricut or a Silhouette, um, you can create these really fun decals for your prints. Um, I'm a fan of, of some nice iconography and, and decals and vinyl is a, a nice way to get these fun things. So I also have a set here. Uh, originally I just kind of had these yellow caps and then I also had some yellow vinyl. So these are nice and subtle if you're looking for that subtle look, right? Just gives you a little look at it. But uh, I printed these out in I'm trying to pop it out now. Tolerance is too good. No, it's just a little thing. So what I ended up doing to make them illuminate better was just printing the keycap in this white translucent filament, pretty much the same filament as the top cover. So you get this nice diffusion. Yeah, and these are kale white box switches. So they're very clicky, right? Um, yeah, you can kind of see the NeoPixels shining in there. Um, I adjusted the code a little bit so that it would stay um, this color. You can change out the colors and stuff. It's really easy to do so. So maybe we'll do that in the, uh, maybe we'll show that off in the, in the learn guide. But yeah, fun little keycap decals. So let's take a look at the learn guide and see where that lives. So we published this one last week and this morning I updated it the bring this into some uh, some some software like uh, Inkscape or Illustrator from Adobe, and uh, modify them if you'd like. Um, yeah, you can pull some icons and stuff from like IconFinder.com or use some letters or something if you'd like, and uh, use those triangles and just make sure that the scale is set to one to one, hundred percent. Um, that way, it uh, uh, colors of vinyl. Maybe there's some with like some rainbow stuff too. And most of them tend to have like an adhesive backing and you'll want to use transfer tape to transfer uh, the artwork onto the keycap, the part, right? And uh, I guess I have one kind of tip is like when I applied them, I found to take all the keys off and just have one on there. That way you can, because it was a little hard to like nail this down when I was uh, trying to apply it. so. I recommend you know sticking this in and doing one key at a time, basically. But that's uh, you know, folks got their own um, techniques for applying vinyl, and um, yeah, it's kind of its own thing, right? But uh, that's really all I've done as an update. But uh, this week we created a video for it, a little short video, 
so uh, folks can know more about it and we can share it on the various channels. So that was kind of what we did this week. And I also have a little bit of a fun uh, thing that came through. Um, so I want to give a shout to Dustin uh, Molo. Dustin Molo had tried um, slicing the fuzzy skin on his Prusa printer and there is an issue with the uh, the STL. So I want to show you folks right now and kind of walk through um, how to fix it. So give me a sec to to rework my uh, my screens here. So yeah, so in Cura, this is the slicing software. It's open source, free to download. There was an issue where if you switch to the Prusa or any style of Prusa printer for the slicing profile. Over here, I'm going to turn this off here. Um, when you search for fuzzy skin, you turn it on. I have fuzzy skin on, and then the thing that makes this really work is the second um, option called fuzzy skin outside only. This makes sure that all the internal walls are remain smooth. So let's try to let's try to slice it and see what happens. In the preview tab, you'll get a look at it. In the area is is pretty problematic. So slicing this as the default, um, there is some weird issue with printing this thin wall. Um, <laughs> it uh, it just kind of the slicer just kind of ignores it. I'm not sure why the Prusa profile is doing this because on an Ultimaker profile, it slices it just fine. So. This got me thinking. There is a feature in Fusion or in Cura called Thin Walls. It's an option that lets you print thin walls right here. So I just searched for a thin wall. I'm going to activate it. Now let's try to slice it again and see what happens. I figured this would fix it, right? You're just telling the slicer, "Hey, don't ignore that geometry. Try printing this thin wall." But Cura kind of treats it as a special thing. Looking at the at the render, it does print it, but the fuzzy skin is still seeping through that geometry and, and, and we cannot have this geometry fuzzy on the inside because then the top, the bottom cover won't fit. Um, so I had to go back into Fusion and just modify the, th the wall thickness for this extrusion. So I had to get a, an updated STL out for folks. So that's the current one. Um, if you look on Thingiverse, you can now see that we have a new uh, fuzzy skin dash v2. So this is version two. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just instead of making this uh, USB port um, 0.4 millimeters thick, it is now 0.6 millimeters thick, and that's the sweet spot for like still being able to cut this geometry away. So let me turn off print thin walls, and then make sure fuzzy skin is enabled, and that looks to be right. So I've turned off the fuzzy, uh, I turned off the thin wall um, feature, and now I'm just gonna try to print this V2 and see what happens. It should work. <laughs> and there we go, yay. So there's a little bit of a thing um, with the Prusa profile. If you're gonna use this kind of thin wall, fuzzy skin technique, you'll wanna make sure it's not too thin. So that's about it. It was really easy for me to update the CAD because like I have it set up and it's parametric. Um, so it was easy enough for me to really knock, export this one out and upload it to, uh, upload it to Thingiverse. So if you got yourself uh, a different printer, uh, give this a try and, and see what, uh, give the version this one, and give it a try. He did print it out on, uh, on his Prusa. We got a, a, a dark Gothic lemon here, which looks really cool. Oh, wow. Sweet, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So uh, shout out to Dustin. Um, thank you for letting us know. And if folks have other things and feedback, will you let us know? You can tag us on any of the social channels and, and uh, we'll say what's up. Cool. So that's uh, the update kind of to, uh, to our fuzzy skin lemon here. <laughs> Where's the lemon learn guide? Yeah, there we go. I, I got to update the STL here on the zip file, so I'll make a note of that. And um, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Folks bug me about it too. If you, if you still find that, the, where's this P2? It's on Thingiverse right now, but uh, we'll get it up here in the learn guide as well. Cool. Mm -hmm. Is everybody cool with that? Yep. Bruce says that uh, you could say the V1 of the print was a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Then fuzzy wuzzy cutie pie. 
Fuzzy was a cutie pie. Was a cutie pie. Was it really was a fuzzy, wasn't and it? And then uh, words uh, Bruce thought he'd never hear. So I sliced the fuzzy skin. <laughs> With a thin wall at that. Yeah, that was super fun. Um, right. And I think yeah. you wanted to do a quick segment on the bundle fly. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, let's check out bundle fly. Super fly, bundle fly. So, um, Bundle Fly is our, our latest addition to the Learn Guide, the Learn System. It's really easy to get your code and libraries and project asset files with a single button. Let me go to the preview here so I can see that button. This big blue honking button, click on that and it's going to download all of the files and packages it for you. Our little Bundle Fly flies in. He's got a stack of Python files it's called the Pile. We'll make and it will automatically generate all the files for you and dependencies so you don't have to go hunting down your libraries you can just grab the zip file and throw it on your usb circuit python drive thank you bundlefly disappears <laughs> i wish he would take his other fly buddies with him <laughs> yeah we got a lot of flies going on <laughs> All right, checking out all the notes. I think that is it for the project. Okay. Hmm. Any questions and stuff? Let us know. But yep, just uh, mentions of having the Cali switches. Uh, they should be back in stock fairly soon. You call soon. them Cali switch? Those are cool, Cali. I call them Kale. Kale, Cali. I Cali Kale. They're more delicious if you're Kale. Hmm. Kale chips. All right, I think we jump into this week's, what are we prototyping? Um, was that it? But, but, yeah, I think prototype, and then for shop talk, I'll do a ten pull to the uh, the two layer by layers for this lemon. Oh, just ten pull it now. Okay, so head over to we got a playlist of all the layer by layers, and uh, with the lemon, I got two layer by layers out. First one was the ideation of a lemon. Yeah, the ideation of lemon. A lemon was just a, a little kind of background story of. Uh, how I came to the idea, and I walked through a couple of the uh, the things in CAD that I wanted to try out. So it's kind of a fun one. And then the fuzzy skin walks through setting up um, the slice in Cura. Um, what else do I do in that one? I do some other things in there, but you can check it out. Um, yeah, so those two labor layers are, are new, so you can check those out if you haven't already, and I appreciate it if you did. Cool, now we can do, what are you prototyping? All right. What are you prototyping? So there's been a couple of projects coming out for the awesome new line of Trinkies, which are these super cool little teeny tiny, uh, like single purpose um, little boards. This one has cap touch buttons on the uh, front and back here, and the SAMD on here. So uh, you can run through your Python, of course, or Arduino. And one of the cool uh, things that you can do with this is have it be a input device. Liz and uh, John made one for, uh, Liz did one for doing a Zoom meeting. So you can have like the mute buttons on there. Yeah, there's some key commands. Key commands that you can add on there. And John made a uh, trigger button for like a camera or any other uh, input that you yeah. need for What's that. What's cool about theirs is that they integrate the NeoPixel animations into it. So as you're triggering different modes or different key commands, NeoPixels will change and update. Really, really cool one. Definitely check out those guides again by JP and and Liz. Yeah, and Katni, uh, uh, Katni Rambor just released the product guide for this. So it has all the pinouts and additional code if you want to try something else and put the code that it ships with back on there. Uh, thanks for everybody that out. picking one up. We had a good slew of them, but everybody picked one up, so super great. Of course, you can check out JP's uh, product pick as well. That's kind of what helped kind of solve them all out. Yeah. And then you can see here, you got the primary guide by, um, by Katni and then Liz's uh, Zoom shortcuts. I mean, it's not just for Zoom. You can, you can customize the, uh, the alt key, the control key, mm -hmm. and it kind of does two things there. So you can change those up. And they have some really good NeoPixel code as well. So uh, check that one out. So this was uh, this inspired Lamar by one of the I guess it was a USB flashlight. So of course uh, we made a 3D printed enclosure that would have some nice diffusion for all the lights while still having access to the uh, reset button on there. So one of the first ones that we showed off I think it was last week we showed off this one with cap touch uh, buttons on there. Let's see my camera. There it is. 
So we have this, um, we have this 3D printed uh, filament that has conductivity on it from protopasta. I think I showed this off last week where you have access to the buttons like so. Yeah, last week those touch buttons were not three dimensional, like they weren't covering over the top yet. Yeah. So what oh, you yeah, did yeah, was yeah. you updated them so like they're more, it's like how can I reposition this mm -hmm. cap touch? Yeah. And this is, this sort of has that, that ability with that geometry where it kind of prints over um, the, it wraps around the tip of it. Yeah, this is really what, neat. This is what you mean. So it's going from the back over to the top because as you can see uh, on the PCB, you don't have any cup, uh, cap touch ability on the top here. So that's what I was uh, aiming to do with this one. You can see there you can uh, access the top, the uh, bottom or back. And then uh, this part right here will have access to cap touch. Uh, so Lamar uh, had suggestions saying that, you know, and not everybody's going to have cup uh, Conductive. conductive filament so let's go ahead and go with one that has uh, the pads exposed so here is one with all of the pads exposed you can easily access those and even has a little loop for a keychain uh, suggested by John here who wants to have these as a nice little backup USB uh, key so yeah it's all the same stuff you have access to the front and back uh, you lose the ability to touch it from the top but not really needed if you yeah. have this nice little a handle on here to take it off and see is one of those built-in put in place buttons it might look tiny but there is a crap ton of geometry going on in here yeah, uh, let's yep. see if we can so small and kind of see you know, like a bunch of chamfers and a bunch of like little pieces that lock into the little slots that are in between the cap touch buttons there and uh, you know, sort of going to the limits of how thin uh -huh. while still maintaining strength on a printer but what this is doing is uh, going right into the center there and preventing it from slipping out like you might have seen on this one here uh, there is uh, there wasn't a way for that one to uh, grab on grab mm -hmm. onto something this has some uh, nice little chamfers and fillets here that grab on to the entire board and prevent it from slipping out uh, you could use this as a you know as a keychain uh, without nice and protected a bunch of chamfers going on in the back here so you can so your finger can easily access that i'm sure until it's in focus it's, it's fixed Whoa, there, you go. there you go you get some macro there sweet and then you can see all the lovely texture that we have on there from the pei sheet gives it a nice diffused look powder coated is. pei flex build trademark yeah. amazing and then here is what the oh my god it's so tiny What's up? <laughs> this reminds me of those uh little hamster models that people oh my make gosh, look at that. yeah and this is no oh, nothing good. fancy that we did with this your kind of stock nozzle and everything yeah so here, Prints it on a Creelty sr I mean, uh, this was the, yeah the v2 v2 okay. so you can see here that uh, this little cutout here allows the button to uh push down on the reset yeah a little recess cut out yeah. wonderful that's great yeah, I really like the time. handle you've, uh, without that handle, you have this slot that would work okay for a slip ring, like a really thin one, but now you can use those big lanyards for like conventions and stuff. You mm -hmm. can kind of use those big hooks onto that, uh, onto that handle. Yeah, and with the light catching on there, you can kind of see how it actually slides in there. You have all mm -hmm. these chamfers. I should have had you That's load up the fusion rail. file because yeah, it looks, there's so much geometry going on in here. That's super cool. For yeah. such an itty bitty little <laughs> enclosure. Uh, I really like doing these to sort of test the limits of how small you can make Simple something. be hard, yeah. Yeah, so this was uh, definitely a lot of fun to re redo this. Um, the, we'll closure. release the... I'm getting that out, out of focus. Yeah. Maybe it's too close. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I'll uh, we'll release this, I think in like two weeks since we have to uh, sort of jump projects ahead of it just for uh, right. keeping it in line with uh, yeah, we things that are coming out. Box stuff, yeah. Yeah. They're very cool. It's really nice to see the progress of Again, this Again, keep that there. I want to show how this just locks in like that. Oh. And I'll press fit. So I'll just press yeah. fits in like that. And you have a nice little mechanical uh, stability for nice making sure this doesn't get out of the, get out of its case. Yeah, man. It's good. Uh, the next step for this, now that I have all of the um, enclosure uh, tolerances all figured out, I'll probably take some of the line artwork that Bruce has made for the characters for all of the trinkies. Each one has its own little Pokemon 
themed inspired character. This one is a jellyfish. So I think these could be like the tentacles and his head is down here. Um, maybe do some little vinyl cutouts for his eyes. It's gonna be a lot of fun for that. Sweet. And that is the Neo Trinky Diffusion case. Wonderful. If you guys any other ideas for shapes or any other features like the little loop key ring, definitely let us know. Yeah, all right. And uh, you can sign up to get notified when they are back in stock if you did not pick one up. And let us know if, you, if you're still interested in the uh, con uh, conductive filament case. Uh, this one, uh, it still was cool. really good, yeah. Still Maybe cool, release but... it to release the files and yeah. we'll just kind of say, hey, check out this 3D Hangout where mm -hmm. we uh, tell you about it. <laughs> yeah. I just like the, the one that Lamar suggests a little bit more better. <laughs> oh, you're out of frame there. Whoops. There so go. this is how this guy works. All of the parts print separately. So you can, uh, you don't need a dual extruder. Like black piano keys. Huh? Yeah. And that's how that is. The only tip with printing these out uh, they will stick too good to oh, the really? PI sheet. Yeah, I made Whoa. a nice mess of my bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> so definitely use like uh, glass that. or the blue. Uh, blue tape. Blue tape. Yeah. That's how that works. Uh, again, I like this one. Nice and sturdy. That's a good point. Like uh, composite, different PLA composites. Careful with that PEI, man. Oh, yeah. Like uh, Ninja Flex is notorious for like fusing to PEI. Yeah. All right, cool. And that's what we're prototyping. Sweet, man. Neo Trinky. We'll have sign that. up. Yeah, sign up, please. Do you want to get one? Cool. Let's see. You want to talk about uh, Star Wars? Uh, technical Machinery is asking, can we reprogram the LEDs in the Neo Trinky? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Check out uh, Liz's guide and... What are we reviewing? Yeah, it's it's fairly new too, so give us a couple of weeks too to come up with some more documentation for it. It might be kind of bare bones right now, I think. I'm only seeing Arduino examples. But definitely check out um, maybe the CircuitPython um, Essentials guide too. Yeah, it's Arduinos. But if you're covered with Arduino, check it out. There's some sample code here. All right, linking and, uh, off on whatever product is picked for that week. Yeah, on show and tell, he showed how you can control the, an iOS device yeah. to do the cut, the camera shutter. The code's right there. It's done Beautiful. in Arduino, so check it out. What's great about this is you could easily switch between Arduino and CircuitPython and have about the best of both worlds. Breakout boards for the Trinket. Yeah, this is the uh, Trinket. Or Trinket? Or Trinky? Trinky. Okay, because the Trinket is a little bit different. A lot of bit different. All right. Hanging in in the chat. What's up, folks? <laughs> uh, Liz thinks it's a good example of conducting filament. Yay. Yeah, right. It's really cool. You can kind of reposition where you want your touch pads to be or give them different shapes. Yeah, that was my whole goal with that. Just uh, you know, a couple of years ago, the we did some things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we we did things. Oh, yeah, we we there. uh, dual printed it with flexible materials that worked out pretty good. We did like these gloves, mm -hmm. LED gloves. I like your LED tester. It's like it's a bit of a. Oh, yeah. It's like tweezers where the That's tips right. yeah, have yeah. embedded conductive filament pads, and you would put a a, bat, a coin cell in between a spot, and you would be able to test your LEDs that way. Mm -hmm. well, it's really testing the battery, right, and the LED, I guess. Yeah. Very cool. Yep, you can use any LED. We tried, like, the um, SMD and the through-hole LEDs, and they yep. both worked beautifully worked with the conductive filament. I've made in a case where it was, like, an NPR radio, and, like, imagine these right here were conductive prints. Mm -hmm. I kind of did it that way, too. I think I used tape and wires, though, to kind of extend those, mm -hmm. so you can do buttons, too, like that. Yeah, uh, on that point too, with the LED glove, I was using the bare conductive paint or paint. Yeah. To uh, so it depends on what you're doing. Yeah. If you want, I'll get echo stuff what PT fast. usually says. Uh, just try both out. Yeah. See which one you like better. Depends on the project. I'm thinking Circuit Python will probably gets you up faster. Um, the iteration. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Micah really basically answered it with it. Depends on what you want to do. CP is better for beginners. Arduino is better for timing sensitive projects. There you go, yeah. Although, 
I've heard, what was it, the last show, that it was a... Uh, so Python is starting to get really too fast. fast. It's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then suggestions from Yan. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to Shop Talk. Um, yeah, a little bit of Shop Talk. The uh, May the 4th was yesterday. That was like Star Wars Day. I think it still is today with it's Revenge still. of the 5th. Revenge of the 5th? All right. Well, what we got here... So we got a kit <laughs> for uh, for building your own lightsaber. Uh, this kit's been out of stock for quite some while, so it's really nice to see it back in stock. There's 45 of them in stock. It comes with just about everything you need to build a lightsaber, the battery, the wiring, the speaker, the M4, the feather M4 that can do circuit Python and Arduino, and the prop maker feather wing, which has all the circuitry for doing accelerometer, um, motion sensing. It has uh, all the power voltage for, for powering high power LEDs strips that has like a NeoPixel port right on it and it has a built-in amplifier for the super pumping bass. <laughs> so you could get the kit right now if you want to build your lightsaber. We have uh, a couple of builds that y'all can play around with but the majority of folks like to build their own uh, hilts and things but yeah it's nice to see this one back in stock. Yeah I kind of want to make a new lightsaber. I kind of want to bring Two of them and smash them together. Like I like what uh, the internals for the dark saber, um, but I also like the like the, the ergonomical body for that one over there. That was more of a three watt LED lightsaber, which is a little bit different. So maybe in a few months or something, I'll I'll jump on that one. But that's my quick uh, May the Fourth thing. What, what are you looking for? Learn guides? Yeah, suggestions on the um, yeah the. Uh, called cap touch buttons with the conductive filament the uh, files the, for that yeah where's like the actual there it is oh there it is strange huh oh because it was a five zero or something mm. e. that's cool all right well uh that's that's it for shop talk i think yes we're ready for community uh, bruce is saying once the uh, extendable lightsabers from disney are released oh, gosh. circuit python Time for no, those. i don't think they're releasing those i think those are um like for show only? They release. have to be working on releasing those. Yeah. Because, uh, definitely one, huh? Maybe. Alright. We'll be sure to uh, replicate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the design plans for the patents shows that it's like a tape. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like, like a, a measuring tape. Measuring the way tape. It kind of retracts and mm -hmm. folds up. You can have flexible LEDs and also. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, hey, shout out from Keith, the developer. Hello. Says uh, thanks for all the Fusion 360 uh, uh, tutorials on making brackets, of course, the boards. Pleasure. Thank you for watching them. Uses them frequently. Oh, thank you for watching. Yeah, appreciate it. You ready for community makes? Yeah, let's jump into community makes. All right. Well, it was uh, May the fourth yesterday. So what do you think we printed? Grogu. So this one was actually supposed to come out for Christmas, yeah, but we December. ran out of time. <laughs> yeah, this was by Stephen Smith. Shout out to Stephen Smith for turning Grogu into a bit of an ornament. Mm -hmm. uh, this does require quite a bit of support material. Again, it uh, came out really good, even after I removed all those supports. There you go. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do was, act, uh, was of course, finish him off by painting all the details in there, but ran out of time. Uh, excellent little print for getting your technique down on painting little miniatures. And there he is. The here's. standard green so filament. Okay. Lots of detail, like in the back here, you have like all of the little pattern, a pattern, um, whatever detail for so this uh, little closer. tiny bit of overhang over his uh -huh. uh, mouth there. Oh. Printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Okay. Uh, the support material, uh, Again, very low density is the key to being able to remove these nice and easily, about 6%. And then a uh, uh, 0.21Z height for the supports. Cool. And, uh, the uh, uh, extrusion width for the support material is down to 0.2. So make it nice and thinner than what the uh, walls are being printed at. And that's pretty much it for the trick on having easy to remove supports. Cool, and I'm pulling up uh, Steve's page on Thingiverse, so we can take a look at that 
Your resin thing is really high res muscle. I think he used oh, wow. a resin print for, for sure, this. For sure, that is totally a great resin print. Now you did have to scale it, right? A little bit. No, this was uh, 100%. Oh, he printed it too on the little S Props is uh, their username there. So SKS Props, thank you for uh, posting these up. Wow, these are great. These All are right. really, really great. Is that ZBrush? It looks like ZBrush to me. ZBrush, wow, look at that detail there. There's phenomenals. So good. Very, very good. Thank you, Steve, for sharing that with the world. And uh, published that on December 13th um, last year. Sweet. All right, we got some more community makes. Um, so let me pull those up. So I want to give a shout out to, to Dustin. This is a bit of a community make, right? He, he got the fuzzy skin. It's a good one there. So again, shout out to Dustin on Twitter. Also on Twitter, Katni thought uh, she, she tried out some Ninja Flex and printed out uh, this little bumper for these PCB coasters. We happen to have some PCB coasters right here. So, And in purple too. Um, yeah, just the only tip uh, when uh, typically you'll, you'll get some a, a bits of string that come on the, in, the insides and maybe sometimes on the outside. I suggest using flush diagonal snips to remove them and uh, nail clippers in a pinch, right? Those, these were uh, released some time ago. It was a collab project with, uh, is it SAR? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, Boldport, uh, the fellow who, yes. uh, who runs the Boldport. Nice little uh, artwork here. I don't believe these are still available, right? Yeah, they were kind of like the the NT, what is it, NFTs? Mm. For not mm -hmm. forever things. <laughs> not forever things. <laughs> I don't know. PCB art coasters. Yeah, Adafruit. And their they're, they're, artwork is done by the fellow who does Bold Port, I believe. Uh, yeah, Bold Port. And uh, Katni, you know, shout out to Katni for printing out uh, the thing on her Prusa. So nice. It's nice to see that uh, these things work. <laughs> Because the printing Ninja Flex is always a little bit of a challenge, and printing something like a bumper is a really good first time print. Get your settings dialed in and your temperature. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have a learn guide that. as well on uh, Ninja Flex. Just some common things to look out for. Mm -hmm. What's up? And above that, it is a nice practical print since it prevents these from sliding around. Since yeah. it is a PCB, it is uh, quite slippery on a desk if you don't have some sort of grips or some feet on the bottom. Yeah. Did you search on the store for the PCB? Oh, they, 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 no, they, I was trying to pull up them. this other make uh, from over here. The, uh, These are in stock. I'm sorry. There's like a bunch of them in stock. Oh, there you go. Yeah. They have different, there's four different ones, and they all have different uh, artwork on them. So you can kind of get a look at the photo. You have that really nice solder mask kind of effects going on. Sweet. Piece of it for four. All right, and then the next community makes a shout out to Gatney. Thanks for printing that out. Uh, the next one is Terrico. This is the Guardian robot. Uh, this was a couple weeks ago project down to fifty percent, and he didn't do the uh, the electronics, which is which is fine. Like it's cool that you you have such a detailed little model. You mm -hmm. don't even need to do the electronics. We yeah. don't want to. Um, and. Their, their kiddo looks kind of like Gavin. It's like your <laughs> doppelganger kiddo. That's pretty cool, but very, very cute. Um, thank you to uh, fellow here. What is their name? Uh, Armand Ritt. Cool. And then on Twitter, Patrick McDavid shouted me out and created this really fun funhouse stand for the funhouse. Um, shouted out the, uh, the Laravel Air tutorials and where I show you some of the the techniques for creating PCB mounts. It's really cool to see this one. Looks like he's added two extra STEMIQT sensors on top there in this nice kind of 45 degree angle. And they're all daisy chained with the STEMIQT cable, which is really cool. Yeah. It's a good way to get this link over to you on the uh, Dark Saber build. Um, just in. Build of the Dark Saber. So shout out to Patrick. Patrick uh, put that up on. Uh, on Thingiverse as well, so you want to check that out. You can search for Adafruit Funhouse Stand, and this will show right up. Yeah, it's this, standing up like that. This is a sweet. great idea. I'll definitely want to build on top of this. It's great. Yeah, yeah it's interesting to print it that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, you print it the other way, sorry, you flatten it down. Yeah. Because I can see the layer lines where they are. Mm 
Very good. Very clever. Cool. And then I got one last one. Do I have a last one? I think that was it. Yeah, that was the last one. Designs. Hello. Thank you for posting up. Your build of the dark save. Wow, look at that. Got the helmet and the uh, armor. <laughs> this is definitely the way. That's so cool. Yeah, that's the, yeah, just, an odd, like the, <laughs> the, just a little bit of what you see is so good. Yeah, the because we know how hard it is to get the helmet nice and shiny yeah, and then see. get the material all nice yeah, and Like when the blade folded. itself is what's given the, 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 the light is really cool. Mm -hmm. That is super cool. All right, and I yeah. think that is it for this week's Community Makes. Thank okay. you all for all posting. Sure. Oh, we got one more. Oops. We got a unicorn. <laughs> how oh, yeah, yeah. In, the directly in the chat. Yeah, let's in the Discord. Right up here. This is right up cool. unicorn. So Skur is working on this unicorn uh, wall hanger, I suppose. Nice. And uh, really, really nice shape. Looks like you got some snap fit parts. Hey. Maybe a USB port of mm -hmm. sorts. And uh, everybody else, thank you for, for joining us today. I think we're ready to start winding down here. A little bit early, but hey, we're good. All right, don't forget to tune in later tonight. Yeah, we got the contest. I want to find out who won, who's mm -hmm. got the most puns or the best caption. I'd like to know. You can find out tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right here in the same channel. Yes. There'll be a full hour with Lamar and Phil on all of the news and products. Yeah. Top secrets. Top secrets. Brands. Think, uh, PM Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Everybody is in welcome, invited to hang out. I will post the link in the Discord to the StreamYard on uh, joining, so you can show off all of your lovely projects that you're working on. It doesn't have to be electronics or 3D printing. It can be uh, art projects, crafty, arts and crafts. Space. We like retro gear. It's really fun to yeah. look at. A history lesson is always mm -hmm. nice. Um, plans, ideas, those are mm -hmm. fun too. It's a great time to chill. So, uh, so we invite you to, to, Come uh, to hang, hang out with out. us. And then tomorrow we have John Park's workshop. Whoop! Not that one. He already did that one. Yeah, Thursdays is with John Park. We've got uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Tune in. Maybe get some uh, some Sergey Python Parsec. Yeah. Check that out. And then Fridays is Deep Dive with Scott at 2 mm -hmm. p.m. Pacific Time or 5 p.m. Eastern. It's On like a Sundays, we have Desk Lady Ada. Yeah. Which includes uh, the great shirt search with a DigiKey. So mm -hmm. all of the cool components and parts for building a product. So a lot of the things that are used on these boards. If you want to figure out how to find them, definitely tune into that every single week. Yeah, and check the archive as well. They're mm -hmm. really great streams. And then looping right back around to the beginning of the week, we have uh, J JP's product pick of the week. Definitely want to tune into those. The product that is picked for the week, if you view it on the uh, product page for that, you'll get a huge discount. So definitely tune into that. Every single week. I'm trying to be a YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for us. We are you've been watching 3D Hangouts. Buzz buzz buzz. <laughs> With Bundlefly here. Sorry. He'll uh, make an appearance every single <clears throat> week now. Yeah. So thank you everybody for joining us. We'll see you later tonight. But until then, remember to make, make a, great, a day. great day. Bye folks. See you later tonight. Yay!